tell me who Dick Fosbury was and what he has to do with being adaptable. Great. If you had seen Dick Fosbury in 1968 in Mexico City, you'd see this tall, thin, 20-year-old guy wearing two different color athletic shoes. <laughs> and you, you might be tempted to dismiss him. Right. And yet he stands before his approach to the high bar in the Olympic Games. He runs to the high bar and then he throws himself over the high bar backwards. Now, that's not the way high jumpers jump. <laughs> there have been a lot of different impressions, but he goes over backwards and the crowd starts laughing. And one of the reporters there said the crowd laughed so hard, they barely noticed that he won. And he set an Olympic record and won a gold medal. Hmm. And this 20 year old University of Oregon engineering student had been high jumping for years. He'd studied high jumping. He determined that if he changed the way he went over the bar and went over backwards, he could actually keep his center of gravity below the bar and sort of roll over it. And you say, well, wow, Dick Fosbury is just the most brilliant guy ever. Well, he's pretty smart. But what he did couldn't have been done in earlier years. Hmm. Because for years in high jumping, you jumped over the bar and you landed on maybe some sawdust, maybe nice. some sand. But if you land on the back of your neck, you probably break it. Mm. And so that kind of backward jump wasn't possible. It wasn't physically survivable. Mm. But by 1968, we had these big, thick crash pads on the other side of the bar. So it was very forgiving on the, the landing area. So suddenly, two factors came together. The first was changed conditions. It became possible to adapt. Right. And then a person, Dick Fosbury, who has the mental flexibility to say, hey, conditions have changed. I can adapt and I will. Almost all high jumpers now use Dick Fosbury's technique.